Today we're sorting out aluminium. No, you haven't missed an episode. I haven't done oil yet. Because to unlock the well thing that I need for the oil, I need to first be able to make some aluminium sheets and casing. So that's why we're doing aluminium first. So let's get this party started. Well that's all the stuff I have right now. I still need the computers and a tiny bit more rubber. And of course, I have no coupons. So, have a guess what happens now. It's spider bashing time. That's five coupons. So I'll get one rubber and the rest plastic. Yes, I'm still buying plastic instead of computers. If you can't tell from the to-do list on the side of the screen there, five coupons wasn't enough. I'm over halfway though, so this should definitely be the last farming run. At least the last run to make coupons. Of course, I will still need to farm coal from now until the end of time. That's another five coupons. All right, let's get aluminium unlocked. And there we go. Now the next milestone is of course, this one, so we can get that stupid well thing and finally have some oil to work with. So then, the time has come to build an aluminium factory. So first I need to find some bauxite. Ah, here we are. But obviously I'm not going to be doing this by hand. It's just a little bit more complicated than that. And actually there are three bauxite nodes right here. And another two far off over there somewhere. So I figure since the only reason anyone actually comes to the swamp is for bauxite. Because there's quite a lot of it. And since I don't have any other use for the bauxite nodes. I may as well just use all of it and make one massive aluminium factory and then never have to worry about aluminium ever again. So let's get some miners together and bring all the bauxite to one location. Okie dokie, I'll just get these stairs out of the way and I'll make a little mining building outside here. So we got one node over here, there's another one right here and then one down here right in front of the door to my main base. So I'll have to figure out some other entrance. I'll just wall these miners in and make them into a little building. Ta-da! It makes a nice little addition to the side of my main hub. And I put some coloured signs under the staircase for no reason whatsoever. Oh, there's a wall in the way. One second. There we go, so it leads into the main hub area. Still a little bit of a janky entrance. You can also get in from the other side if you go up here. And then you can see if you go round, it comes back down to the other side. 
Anyway, enough dicking around with that. Let's find those other bauxite nodes. Ah, there they are. Hold on, let me just deal with this guy first. Hopefully he does the big bomb attack. Nice. This is the last time I'll be killing these hogs. Because they're not going to respawn once I've put miners on the bauxite nodes. Alright, so here's the two nodes. And I think I'll do something similar to what I did with the other ones. That should just about do it. Ta-da and stuff. Now I just need to convey the bauxite halfway across the swamp. I'm going to try and do this nicely, because there's no roads to cover this up. It's just going to be sitting here loud and proud. I kind of like that. I've just put some frame pillars over the belts. Makes it look a little more weather resistant. And in my opinion, has an acceptable level of clipping with the belts. Never try this. This game hates when you use arbitrary angles. Ah, uh, see what I mean? Don't forget to add some signs to make everything look 100 times better. There you go. That definitely didn't take an unreasonable amount of time for just 50 meters of conveyor belt. Well, it's been a while now, and I've turned on the miners. So let's follow the bauxite back to base. Ah, uh, here it comes. Oh look, the signs make the bauxite kind of glow. That's pretty neat. You see? Signs. No signs. Anyway. It goes around here. And then it goes around here. And then it goes down here. Then across here. Then down the side of here where it kind of messily goes under the road and all the way back to base. See they come out here and join into the other bauxite which I haven't connected up yet. There we go, all connected up. And the bauxite goes through the building here. And out the other side where it waits to be connected to the as yet non-existent aluminium factory. Which is going to be right around here somewhere. Now we get to figure out all the numbers. Okay, so apparently I need 27 water extractors. Well, we've already got one here on the copper sheet factory. So I'll just extend some foundations out from there. And there is our borderline of how far out they need to be. See if we can get a better angle on this. Okay, so I've lined them up to face each other. So I can have two rows of pipes between them. And then there will be four rows of extractors, seven in each row, with one less to make 27. You see the pipes go down the middle like this. Okay, that's all the extractors, but the pipes need to go up, so I need to wall this in and build a ceiling. So I'm going to use Mark 1 pipes, one because I haven't unlocked Mark 2 pipes, and two because they require plastic. And also there's that sort of floating point error with Mark II pipes, but I won't go into that. It's not relevant anyway, I'm not exactly aiming for perfect efficiency here. So I'm connecting them in pairs, because I'm going to have to use pumps. So if I pair them up first, that's half as many pumps. Alright, I kind of need to figure out how the refiners are going to sit, so I know where the pipes need to go. Okay, so that should be all the refiners. I'm also going to need some foundries. So I guess I'll add them on the end here. So there's a bit of extra space over the extractors on the end here. And this is where I'm going to put the coal production. Because aluminium needs coal. See? Needs coal. And I know that building in the distance already makes coal. And I was going to add a little extension to that to make the coal for the aluminium. But if I'm making it over there, I still have to bring it back over here, so I may as well just do it here. One thing I've been neglecting to use is mycelia. So this coal factory will accept all forms of biomass, including mycelia. Okay, there's my little coal extension. I mean, I haven't hooked up any logistics for it yet, or for any of the machines for that matter. Well, I guess I'll start here.
we got this little gap here and this is going to be the perfect space to put some fluid storage because the way I'm going to do this factory it's using all of the bauxite but I also need silica and although you get some from the bauxite it's nowhere near enough so I'm going to have a lot of leftover alumina solution which I'm going to store in buffers and then every so often go and flush the tanks there are two reasons I've chosen to do it this way one, because although it would be easier to turn it into aluminium scrap and then sink the scrap, that requires that I use coal. So I'm having to farm coal just to sink the waste, which doesn't really make much sense. And the second reason is that eventually I will actually need alumina solution to make batteries in the future. So I'll already have that problem solved. And it might seem like kind of a pain to have to go and flush the pipes all the time, but really it's not that much of a hassle. The factory won't produce anything anyway unless I've already supplied it with coal. So, as par for the course at this point, if you haven't noticed, this entire playthrough is just a little bit annoying. So flushing a single pipe every time I need aluminium is the least of my troubles. It's all starting to come together. I still haven't done the logistics floors yet, but everything is connected up here and all the recipes are set. But all this does is make the ingots. And since there are only two things in this game, at least in update 8, that require aluminium ingots, I may as well make both of those things as an addition to this factory. And those things are aluminium casing and alclad sheets. The latter requiring copper ingots, which is why I built this factory next to the copper node right here, which is also shared with the copper sheet factory. Oof, that's upsetting. I guess I'll have to turn that into a feature at some point. Okay, that's all the machines in place. Now for the complicated part. Pipage and conveyorage logisticage. I'll start with the easy part. Supplying the smelters with copper. This is all very repetitive, so I'll save you the tedium and skip ahead. Well, it was inevitable at some point, but I ran out of steel beams for the conveyors. Kind of annoying really, because once the aluminium factory is up and running, I'll be able to make the parts for Mark V conveyors, and I'll be replacing all of these belts anyway. But for now, I need more coal. So it's time for some creatures to die. blew out this wall by accident, but look at that, it's the rest of the game. Somewhere I can never go. It looks so beautiful, so clean, so much untapped potential. Oh well. There you go, make me some steel beams please. Okay then, I've done all the conveyor logistics, excluding the refiners, but I'll get to that. 
right now I want to sort out the pipes. So, how the fuck am I going to do this then? Ta-da! All done. Now, for some reasons that I cannot understand, somehow, all the water is able to reach the refiners 30 meters above without the use of a single pump. So what I've done is I've connected all the pipes together on the roof into a loop. So it's basically a manifold and all the refiners just take the water when they need it and the system refills as necessary. So maybe it has something to do with that, like the loop zeroes the head lift for some reason. But even then the water still shouldn't be able to reach the ceiling without a pump. And as far as I know, there is no siphon effect in the way that the pipes work in this game. Maybe it's back pressure or something? I don't know. I don't think anyone truly knows how pipes work in this game. Maybe the devs don't even know how the pipes work. But I guess it doesn't really matter how it works, just as long as it does. Though I suspect that once the refiners are actually using the water, the pipes will very quickly drain and I'll have to put some pumps in. But we shall see. See look, all the pipes up here are full, but this is 30 meters up. It should only have a head lift of 10 meters. As I said, I'm not going to question it. If it works, it works. Now I just need to figure out how to get the ingots made here, over to there. Should be simple enough. Yeah, this is simple. Totally, completely easy. Kind of reminds me of that screw factory I made a while back. You know, the, uh, the one million screws per minute factory. Yeah, good times. Only took me 700 hours and half of my sanity. Okay, that's all the conveyors done. Now I just need to connect up the pipes that lead to the fluid storage. There we go, all done. Looks okay, I reckon. Small amount of clipping there, but I won't tell if you don't. <sighs> oh yeah, I made a bridge over there. Don't remember when I did that. Well, I guess I need to wall all of this in now and connect up the power. I ran out of beams. Ah, shit. Well, I think you know what this means. It's time to go kill some stuff. back. Now turn all of this crap into steel beams, if you wouldn't mind. Well, that will take a few minutes, so let's go for a stroll in the park. Oh hey, it's Clifford the little orange doggo. How's it going, my boy? Thanks for the copper, that's really not helpful. Hello, hello, what's up here then? Caterium, not helpful. Little some wood, nice, nice. Berries, not bad, not bad. Mycelia, okay. And more mycelia. You know, I should probably name those doggos. I'll tell you what, why don't you guys name them? If you have any ideas, leave a comment below of what you guys think I should name the doggos. 
I mean, it takes me a hundred years to actually put these videos on YouTube, so it will probably be a while before you actually see the doggos again. So, do with that what you will. Anyway, where was I? Oh, that's right, connecting up power. Right, now that the refiners are connected, before I go any further, I want to see if the pipage actually works. Because it shouldn't, because they are 30 meters above the water without any pumps. All oh, right, yes, they need bauxite, of course. There you go, that should do it. Well, nothing seems to be happening so far. Oh, here we go. Well, it's working. Oh, there you see. No, wait. It's filling back up. But maybe that's just the back pressure or something. Doesn't seem reliable. But it is filling fast enough by the looks of it. Although the bauxite isn't fully coming through yet either. I mean, the whole factory is designed to accommodate Mark V conveyor belts. And currently, everything is Mark III conveyors. And it's the same with every factory that I've made so far. But after this factory is done, I'll have Alclad sheets and then I can go around and upgrade all of the conveyors. So I'm not really going to know if this factory works properly until after it's finished. But it is at least working. Somehow, don't ask me how, but this works. The extractors are somehow pushing water up 30 meters without pumps. I mean, they're not right now, because the refiners have already filled back up with water. But it has been working. So, I'm going to say this again. Water extractors have a head lift of 10 meters. The refiners are at least 30 meters above. The water shouldn't even be able to reach the top of this room, let alone above it. It shouldn't work, and yet it does. And that's fine with me. Because, as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, then it's only a matter of time. Anyway, let's finish this thing. Oh yeah, there's this annoying ass tree. Ah, oh, whatever, I'll come back to that. So this is the entrance, and the inside is equally as uninspired. It has a door now, but it still needs a lot of work. Two hours later. 
there it is. Aluminium casing and Alclad sheets. For now, they just sit in these crates. While I'm out here, let's make the outside look a little bit nicer. I think it kind of looks like a, a brutalist cathedral. I've been doing this for so long now, and I still need to do the inside. Why do I do this? Why do I spend so much time over designing everything? Because look at it, that's why. Look at all that I've achieved so far, and it's only taken me 320 hours. Well, that's the outside. Now I suppose I should deal with the inside. It's very dark in here. Well, it's brighter now. Hmm, still needs work. Alright, it's finally done. You want to take a look-see? Of course you do. Here we are. These machines make the aluminium casing and the Alclad sheets. Or they would if they were doing anything. Here are the amazing super-powered water extractors that defy the programming of the game. So that's a nice convenient little feature. We got the coal production down here. This is set up exactly the same as the other coal factory. And as we go up a floor, you'll see the foundries that make the aluminium ingots. And behind those are the refiners. And it's got a glass floor as well so you can see what's going on. If there was anything actually going on. Looks like it's currently backed up with silica. That's because the belts are only Mark III right now, so they can't move the silica fast enough. And here is Le Flush. So, th <laughs> so these buffers hold the excess alumina solution. So I don't waste coal turning it into scrap. If we take a look under the floor at the logistics, you can see here that there are four pipes with valves on them. This is for the four refiners that turn the alumina solution into scrap and create water as a byproduct that is then fed back into the system and the valves are there to direct the water away from the output so it doesn't clog up the system with too much water. And that's pretty much it. 
It's a cool looking factory with a few design quirks here and there, but most importantly, everything works. And I'm sure that nothing at all will go wrong in the future. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Well then, now we can unlock this milestone now that we've got the aluminium parts. I've just put them in these crates hanging out of the side of the building for now. Eventually it might have a train station or something, I don't know. But I still haven't done oil yet, so that's somehow still the priority. There we go, that's all of that. Now I just need some radio control units. Oh, come on, really? Looks like I need to make a few more computers. Well, I have five coupons in storage. Oh, and another one here. Yes, I know, I can buy 50 computers for six coupons. It's right there, and I just scrolled right past it. But I guess old habits die hard. So of course, I'm gonna buy plastic instead, so I can waste my time making the computers by hand. There we go, hopefully that will be enough. Ah, oh, look at that. So close, but yet so far. Just one last kill run, okay? I promise I'll make it quick. Just three coupons. It has to be enough. Oh my god, this is gonna be close. You son of a bitch. I'm six short. That's so annoying. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I only spent one coupon. I still have two left. Had you for a second though, right? Finally, let's get this stupid milestone unlocked so I can finally automate plastic. And boom, woohoo. Now we have this thing. So I'll have one of those. And I believe there are six node thingies on the well. And conveniently, I already have the rubber and the plastic. Just need a couple other things. Before I get the parts together, I just wanna check that this is actually gonna work. I just have this overwhelming dread in the back of my mind that I've missed some crucial detail that prevents me from ever having oil. Please. Oh yes, thank fuck. See that? It snaps onto it. Obviously I still need the parts, but I can get oil now. <sighs> no more coupons. Yay! Now I can sleep at night. In fact, I should probably go to sleep now. So, until next time, thanks for watching. Bye bye.